We are, um, it is 10 o'clock and I'm going to read our special call meeting notice. Um, I'll call this meeting to order. This is a special call meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville. We are set at Friday, June 17, 2022 at 10 a.m. in accordance with the provisions of Section 21.321 of the Mississippi Code of 1972 as amended. <coughs> Mayor D. Lynn Sproul does hereby give notice of a special call meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville to meet on Friday, June 17, 2022 at 10 a.m. Startwell second floor conference room of the city, Startwell City Hall located at 110 West Main, which is where we are. The specific subject of the meeting is as follows, and this is interviews for the position of city engineer. And so with that in mind, we are, um, we are uh, up for business. We have um, uh, Alderman Rupp will not be with us. Alderman Carver may come in late, but uh, we do have a quorum, and so we will proceed. And um, what I will do is we have two interviews that we have scheduled here. Both both applicants are here. It's Mr. Christopher Williams and uh, Mr. Cody Burnett. And so we will ask Mr. Williams if he would like to come join us first, if you would please. And uh, we will let everybody proceed and ask questions and get to know his, uh, get to know him and who's up there. Alderman Carver. Um, ben, if you would, we're going to put the applicant there so that he will be able to kind of face everybody if that's all right with you. Yeah. Okay. Chris, you can sit right there. It'll be great. Thank you. And we we appreciate your attendance. This is Chris Williams, and you have around the table you have our city clerk Lisa Harden, Vice Mayor Roy Perkins, the Alderman of Ward One Ben Carver. You have the City Attorney Chris Latimer. You have Alderman of Ward Seven Henry Vaughn. Alderman Ward 5, Stuart, uh, Stuart Beatty, sorry, Hamp Beatty, <laughs> um, and then you have um, Mike Brooks is Alderman of Ward 4, and Sandra Sistrunk, the Alderman of Ward 2. So um, Mr. Williams is, for full disclosure, he is the husband of um, Mary Williams, who is working with um, special projects in the engineering department right now. So Mr. Williams, if you would be so kind as to kind of give us a little bit about yourself, we'll start off and let you do that, and then we'll go around with some questions. Um, so good morning, again, yeah, I've got to meet a good many of you all walking in. Um, so, we are covered in name and all that good stuff. I graduated from MSU in 06, um, a civil engineering degree. Um, I have my PE as well in there. While at State, I work as a student worker at um, Dial, out the research lab, and then also co opt for a Spark and Stone. After college, I became an environmental engineer for a firm out of Jackson. Um, specialized in solid waste, so landfills, things along those lines. I also did residential developments, so subdivision, duplexes, those type of things. Um, we wanted to uh, make it back towards the coast for my wife, so I was able to go to the Gulfport as well. She was with her firm um, while there. I went to work for Brown Mitchell Alexander, the firm on the coast um, after Katrina. And so, as you can imagine, being a civil engineer after Katrina, on the coast, there was more work than everybody could do. Um, so I did a lot of heavy civil work, so um, utilities and things along those lines. So kind of those two big pots of money that we did work on. One was getting ready for folks moving off the coast. So they did a lot of infrastructural projects um, for off the off I ten the north. So that was with HUD funds, so CDBG grant funds. Um, so a lot of that were grant administration, things along those lines, and then the construction side of it. Also included getting utilities, uh, easements, things along those lines. Uh, the other one was trying to repair all the damage. Um, so I was over the project on in Gulfport, everything from Highway 49 to the old VA center. Um, so we replaced all the utilities in that area. So water, sewer, drainage, and then the streets and roads and things along those lines um, to try to make the city whole after all the damage from the storm. Um, also there, I did Jones Park, which is at uh, 49 and 90, so we, uh, I did the construction administration of that as well. After that kind of started to slow up, I worked for the Port of Gulfport with BMA. Um, it was over the DuPont project, which is uh, uh, Elbenite ore silos. So it was a $92 million construction budget. We had five design firms that were under us as the lead engineer. Um, it took about three years to do that. So we had to oversee the budget, construction and design budget um, for that project. Um, so I'm used to doing the budget side along those lines. Um, so the type of projects that I worked um, 
down there is residential, commercial developments, hotels, um, things along those lines. So I have that kind of design experience and construction side of that. Um, also got to work with MSU at the Stennis Space Center uh, for their uh, technology, science and technology center there. Um, so I'm kind of used to having to coordinate um, with, with your neighbor there on that side of it. Um, also did industrial development. Uh, so we had uh, clients for the development commission. So whenever large clients would come in, um, we would uh, do feasibility studies to see what kind of utilities they needed, things along those lines. And also building the infrastructure for those industries on my own. Um, just trying to think of what else, so make sure I try to do everything on my own. So I think that's kind of the highlights. Um, other stuff that I think is interesting, as my CMR resume, we uh, started the Engineers Without Borders chapter on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So we completed a pedestrian bridge in the jungles of Panama. Um, so kids. Before we built the bridge, um, they would have to come to the community and the river would get up too high so they couldn't get home, so they couldn't be with their families for all week. We were able to build a bridge um, in the community with community labor and coordination. So that way they were able to go home at night and spend time with their families instead of getting cut off um, from communities and also a safety issue as far as being able to do that. So kind of uh, something to you know, try to give back and try to do some, some good as well using my engineering knowledge. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll kick it off and then we'll, then we'll go around and go by ward or, or however, whoever's got the most, most push here. Um, tell me a little bit, you're, have you, you haven't done any public sector work, is that correct? The, I've done public sector work, I've been on the other side of the table. So all of those jobs that I mentioned as mm -hmm. far as all that, that was for um, the utilities, so Harrison County Utility um, Authority, so that's who has all the utilities inside of county area that's outside of the incorporated areas, Gulfport, Biloxi, all that type of stuff. So we would do projects for those cities, um, for the city engineers, for that side of it. So my, so I'm sitting on the other side of the table doing that, so pretty much overseeing the project for the cities. Okay, it's for the public sector, but it's not, I'm not with, you, didn't do any, you didn't do any intern work or anything for the, in the public sector while you were, uh, okay. Yeah. All of our stuff was for those, because with how much was going on, they couldn't they can't do all that work in house. Right. Sure. So pretty much, we're almost like an extension of the city trying to oversee those projects. Right. Okay. So, well, I haven't been on that side. No. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um, so tell us why it is you want to come to work. Um, I've got two uh, two little girls. The oldest is Amelia. She's going into the eighth grade this year at Starville Academy. Um, so I've only got you know four more years left. Before she graduates to get to really enjoy her before she moves off maybe or hopefully she'll stay close a little bit longer um, on that side of it. The job I have currently, um, I didn't even cover that, it's so a environmental 360 so we do air permitting, water permitting, um, stormwater type stuff and so it's a regional job and so it's about half travel so being away from home uh, I want to try to get to where I can be home every night and get to enjoy my family a little bit more um, on that side so that's so I want to kind of be able to get close. And then the other reason is uh, it's, what I do is completely different than what I did. And I really enjoyed the um, construction side, getting to see projects come to fruition and getting to see um, you know, fishing piers that I built and see fish, folks fish on them or see the bike pass and somebody's biking along and the splash pad and kids playing in it. So I enjoyed getting to see that kind of more direct use of, um, of your talent. Yeah. So you've done splash pad? We did. So Jones Park had a splash pad. Mm -hmm. um, so right across from the roundabout down there, we had a splash pad that we worked on. on that side. So I was over construction administration with that project. Okay, cool. Well, um, and stormwater. You know, stormwater is one of the uh, a big deal for us these days, and it's a touchy, touchy, touchy issue. So you you've worked with stormwater I have, calculations and those sorts of things. We've done all that on there. So as y'all can, as you know, this Gulf Coast is extremely flat. So stormwater is a huge issue down there, uh, as well as quality, um, because most sites down there have wetlands. So once you go to uh, section 401 with the core, that keeps you into a water quality, not just quantity issue. Um, so all of those regulations, we had to, 
the vast majority of sites on the coast, you had to deal, of course, with quantity, but you also had to deal with quality, so making sure that you did BMPs and treatments before you let that water go to a <coughs> um, So all of those type of things I've been involved in. And, and so the, the stormwater calculations for slopes and, and all that sort of business? And that, you know, all our stuff was flat, yeah. so, you know, once we get up something that actually has a little bit of slope, it'll be, all of our stuff was, everything was too flat, so y'all will have a different issue on that one, but I've done all of those. Yeah. Okay. Well, that seems to be a very technical but very needed and talent. Everything's modeled now, yeah. um, so on that side of it, so it's not near as bad trying to run hand calculations. Uh, the guy that I worked under, he made you do everything by hand first and get a, a, an idea of it and then use the computer model so that way you just didn't have something to kick out. Just like, oh, that's gospel. So it made you learn the background. Interesting. It sounds like shooting stars when I was flying for the Navy a long time ago before you ever got to use the, the equipment. Um, and I had one other question about um, the number of people you've managed. Have you talked about your management skills? So, um, so as you imagine, with the $19 million project, there's a ton of other folks that are under that. And so that one, I had five other engineering firms under me, um, and so and then those folks under that, and then also RPRs. Would, which are inspectors, which resident project representatives, um, that's what those are. So having those folks, um, so I managed, I managed our contract and their contracts under us, and then also our inspectors and their inspectors under us, um, and then as well as the administrative staff and things along those lines. Um, so how the consulting work is set up is you kind of do a team project, and so whenever you would have a project, you pull this engineer that's good at this or this engineer from that, and then also subs. Um, so we'd have structural engineers, geotechnical engineers, um, electrical engineers, and different ones along those lines. Um, so that's, my management was actually for other companies, other firms, kind of like an umbrella side of it on that one. Um, and then also I had the co-op um, program. I started that at BMA, so all the co-ops reported to me and started that program. Um, so I really like the continuing education of trying to bring folks in um, on that one. So the managing the people, um, you know, we had it more, we had folks that I would have to be over that we didn't even technically work for, so that makes sense. So it was a team base and then you go to the next team and go again type of thing. So those are the folks that I'm used to managing and then um, our employees. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll pass off. Uh, Alderman Carter? I was going to ask that Harrison County Utility Commission, like Mr. Sweatman and that group, uh, yeah. yeah, they've been extremely uh, aggressive down there, um, especially post Katrina, but then for the last few years, I know y'all especially aggressive on uh, going back and, and a lot of the pumps and a lot of the stuff on the ground and, and redoing that. They had, um, so yeah, we did a lot of the interceptor projects. So what they have down there is they had a master plan. So that's something that I've worked on as well. Or all the cities, um, they'll have master plans of whenever they're trying to, uh, so they'll do a master plan with utilities or stormwater. And so whenever we would do a project, we'd implement those. So if you're coming along on such and such street, well, we know there's a drainage issue for that type of thing. And so kind of implementing that. And so with those, with utility authority, they had a master plan for, uh, sewer water and all those type of things because they're kind of a backbone system and so I did the S15 project for them in the Iberville which is a, about 1500 gallon per minute lift station so that's about 20 by 20 feet by I think probably 25 feet deep so that's how large of a lift station that was there so those type of projects is what the utility authority was doing they're kind of looking big picture instead of like all the little cities and trying to try to regionalize it and try to have some efficiency I was going to ask, just your total years of experience? The 06 and now, so 16, um, I've been in the consulting side. Um, so last three have been environmental. Um, so I'd say about 10 heavy civil with development and the rest environmental, which with a little bit of smattering of civil involved in that as well. Okay. All right. Alderman Um You say you've done some work with municipalities and governmental entities. As, yes, as, as the consultant, so you've seen a bit of what goes on. I have, and the other side of it is so the company that I work for work across the three coastal counties. Mm -hmm. So I've done projects in um, Gautier, Ocean Springs, Biloxi, Ash Christian, um, 
and then Harrison County, Hancock County, Jackson County. So I got to see how the different municipalities work and also um, say, say like specifications. I'm like, all right, this set of specifications. So Biloxi uses M. Dot's Red Book. Well, then Gulfport has their standards. So getting to go over those different ones, I got to see the different sides of it. So um, I got to see a bunch of different ways of getting the same, of tackling the same project. And, and that's from the engineering perspective. Right. It, once you're on the other side of the desk, as, mm -hmm. as you said, um, you're going to have a lot of consumers that, that you didn't deal with in the past. You're going to have um, aldermen. Right. You're going to have um, constituents <laughs> out in the community. You're going to have developers. How do you balance all of that? So I have had all those as clients, but sitting on the other side. Um, so like the Area 3C and 3D project, um, it was going through the historic district of uh, Gulfport. And so you're tearing up everybody's imagine tearing up the street sidewalk to sidewalk oh, for the whole thing so i i touched every single person's lot in that whole area as far as that goes so all of the can all the um all of the citizens concerns those were what i dealt with on a day-to-day -day basis okay. so that part i've dealt with um and then also on the city council side some cities um they would have it where the councilman all went through like the city engineer and then went through and then other ones they had where the councilmen were very involved in their areas when you had a project um so making sure that whenever the, an issue that arises is brought to the councilman and then brought back to me so i've had to i've had to do that portion of it so it kind of depends on what city and how they did that so i've done i've done that we weren't um it wasn't instant as far as that goes on that side of it so dealing with the citizens and taking care of their concerns and knowing um, what you can and can't do public property versus private property and then also grant funds um, you know because whenever you come through with a project and they're like oh well, my, my yard's flooding right here well you know we can do work on public private you know public funds can't go to private property and then also some of these things had constraints to where you just could not adjust that and but um, doing that what we also did was some non um, so we did some funds that we would come along with a different project and then we actually would hear more things so we would pay out of a separate pot of money to, to do that while you're still in the, the area so trying to work around and get the best bang for your buck for cities so we, we, we did day in and day out and try to be where we take care of everything we could unless it just you know, could that's what that so, so you have had to tell people no uh, and, we, and you survived i did i did and we've had you know I've, I've seen uh, everything that y'all have seen. I've seen the, you know, how folks are, you know, and, and likely so, you know, this, it was definitely an inconvenience for them to have that issue, that construction. Um, this department covers a lot of territory. Um, everything from potholes to um, design review for new projects to big in-house projects that we're doing that you may be a little familiar with already. Um, you will need to change hats often and rapidly. Um, speak to that. So, with being on the consulting side, um, at any one time, I've had 15 to 20 projects going on, anything from design through construction. Um, so, you might be rolling along on the design, and then somebody hits a fiber optic cable that cuts off service to downtown. And so, then you've got to run out and get a hold of everybody and say, all right, put out this fire. And, you know come along and then you know somebody you messed up their their pool that doesn't flush because you hit the wrong line or you didn't replace it or that type of thing you got to do that so the consulting side of it we had to deal with the fires on that side of it changing hats constantly um the main thing on that one's having a really good team um and being able to delegate and help figure out and triage those issues um and then also being able to communicate with everybody to let everybody know um, because Hey, we've got all kinds of issues here. We need to make a list of what's priority and what we can tackle. And what, like, yes, that's important, but it's going to take a minute to get to the top of it. Um, so, having a team, being able to delegate out those issues and kind of figure out, I think, is really important and being able to communicate. Well, that, that leads to my, my, my last question, which is what's going to make you successful in this job and, in turn, make this a, a good department for the city of Starville? Well, the one great thing is it's already in great 
great shape. Um, I've got several people that I know that have um, knowledge of the department and they really talk highly about it. Um, so inheriting a great foundation is, uh, is already putting you, you know, head and shoulders above where you're starting. So if you're not having to fix a lot of things to start with and being able to grow from there, um, I think is really, really important. On that side, um, for me, like I said, I've got to see, you know, probably a dozen different municipalities how they operate and how they do different things. So being able to have that variety, um, you know, and have that experience, being able to bring those and say, well, I've seen this work over here, or how about this? So having those different ideas will be able to lend to it and be able to grow it and figure out where we want to take the, take the stuff on that kind of department on that side. So then having kind of had that broad brush stroke experience, I think, will make me be able to, to help uh, bring that to the department. Thank you. Okay, Alwyn Brooks. Uh, I'm, I'm Mike Brooks. I, in in uh, in the real world, I, I play as an appraiser, so I, I'm used to dealing with developers and realtors and, and uh, contractors every day. So, the engineering department uh, has a, a a lot of concern for me. Are, are uh, it's very important. Uh, you know, very impressive resume here. Um, uh, you know, we have two highly qualified candidates. The other one, uh, you know, is, is a member of the department now. So if you would just touch just a little bit on your understanding of what our department does and you know the responsibilities as a city engineer. The so golf department is a little bit unique that you got a little bit of public works um, included into it where most public works departments with the roads and drainage side of it. Um, so that's a little bit unique as far as that goes. Everything else is pretty standard um, from what I've seen in the other ones. Um, so with review and the design and then also the construction oversight. Um, so um, so there's some, some things that are a little bit different, um, but most of it's kind of the standard things that I've seen on that one from talking to people on there. Um, the, like I said, um, everybody I've talked to spoke really highly about the team that y'all have in place right now, um, that they really run a tight ship and uh, they do a great job um, as far as that goes. Um, so, look, so what exactly are you, what? But I just want to make sure you understood everything because as Alderman Sistrom said, you got to wear many hats and I Right, heard. right. So like I said, the, all the design side, the oversight, um, I understand that really well. The public work side of it, um, on that portion of it, so the potholes and that, I didn't do a day in, day out. Um, but like I know, the, the road manager that you got does a really wonderful job on that side of it, so I think I'll be able to learn from him. On that portion of it, so I think on that portion I'm able to help with uh, the engineering side of, say, the drainage issues and looking at our what parts of the city do we have issues and kind of triaging those and kind of helping it and planning out and stuff like that. So that's really the, the the public works portion of it that will be different than what I've I've, uh, I've been involved in. Okay, um, and I I'm trying to strike a nerve here, but yeah, in uh, in a lot of our public eye are from the developer side, which is guys that I deal with daily. You know, our, our engineering department has has had a reputation of being somewhat of an impediment to, to what we're trying to get done. And and right or wrong, I'm not necessarily saying that's true because there's always two sides to every story. You know, uh, but the, you know, I, I do know we've had some some issues where. For one reason or other, it's taken an inordinately long, you know, a long amount of time to uh, to get plats approved and that sort of stuff. So, you know, uh, we, we got to be in the customer service business here. How, how do we get to yes? What What do you see is you know, if you're managing this department, how we can how can we get to yes? Uh, I mean, not giving away the the, the house. Honestly. And I had so so I've been on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, so I've helped developers, like I said, I've done motels, subdivisions. <laughs> all kinds of stuff along those lines. So I'm the one that would usually take those plats and take those designs to the city. Um, as far as being the design consulting engineer, um, the way, and then the other side of it, um, so what I ran into is that you have to have everything that you want spelled out very clearly. So that way the developer knows what he has to hit. You know, here's the benchmark and here's what you have to hit. 
what I ran into was some municipalities bring something in and you would do a design and you would do a design per their code. And then they would come back and say, oh, I want this, and oh, I want this, or oh, I want this. Well, that's not what you asked for, and this isn't what you spelled out. And if we would have known on the front side, it wouldn't have taken time. And so on the development side, everything is based off schedule. So it's Time's your, money. Time is money because you're paying for your float on your loan, right. so that construction loan is eating you. You're having to do all of that. So And then whenever they have to pay for an engineer to redo do something because you wanted something, that's costing them money as well. So what I see is to have a really good playbook of and rules of here's what we want and then hold that to it on that one. And there might be some areas of the city, so what I've seen before on some municipalities that you'll have an area that you know has drainage issues. And so instead of having a 25 year flood requirement, or not flood requirement, the detention, you know, 25 year storm, design storm, you might have a 50 year design storm in that area because you know they'll have the issues downstream. But if you tell the folks ahead of time, they can know that, and then they can build that into their project price, their pro forma, and everything else. Um, so I think the main thing is, like I said, being really apparent. Um, now the other side, you're saying about developers complaining. I don't think that you'll get rid of that because well, I think I'm that's sure. the, you know, on that nature one, of the beast. It is the nature of the beast that that you know they're trying to do that. Um, and then the other side of it is. I think the municipality, because as I've seen it go the other way as well, where the municipality let it have a wild west, and then what happens is the city is inheriting all this. So you build the subdivision, and if it's not up to design and codes and everything as far as that sewer and it starts failing, then it's on the hook for the city. So if you had a 50 year design life and you're replacing it at 15 or 20 because of issues, drainage, sewer, everything else, that's coming out of your tax base. So there's one less part you can do, there's one less other thing you do because you're sitting here doing that type of stuff. So trying to make sure that what you inherit from a developer is quality is very, very important. Um, so I think it's, the developer, pretty much what I'm saying is the city doesn't need to subsidize the developer. Right. You need to be able to get a quality product that will last and do what it needs to be for, for the time that it's designed for. But on the other side, you can't, you can't move the goalposts on a developer. I, I think that's right, and I, and I, uh, right or wrong, I think there are I, anecdotally, I hear that that's, you know, that's some of the issues that, that people have complained about. But I think you're right. Communication on the front end, you know, we've got a good set of, uh, we've redone our uh, UDC, and we've got a good set of code. Just you know, but but also time of this, you know, do you have a, a what do you see as, um, you know, for turning plats around? The, so really like the same idea um, is you know, whatever you say you're going to do, do it. That's the way I felt about it because we would have, um, you would hit, hit the deadlines for a city and then oh well it didn't make that agenda. Well I had all your stuff in time, you know, like, and then all of our stuff is based off of that. Right. Um, now the one issue that's going to do that, if everything hits at once, you only have so many staff and so much things, and then that would be a staffing issue or something else yeah. along those lines. Um, so I don't know. I don't know the workload, you know, as far as like if you're, you know, and I don't know if it's cyclical or along those lines. Um, so it really just depends on what you require and how long it is. We had folks, um, so we had some cities that would take three or four months to go through the process, which because you had to go through a preliminary, and then you had to wait for two weeks to get on the agenda, and you had to get that approved and this approved. So there might be a way to streamline some stuff along those lines, and I don't know your review design as far as that goes for everything else. Um, so it really just depends on how you set it up and, and on that one. And I think no matter what the time is, if you know it on the front end, then they have that built in. Good communication. Because then they have it built in. So then they know I've got to, I've got to charge X square foot in my apartment to pay for it because I had another in a month because they took this type thing. So if you know that on the front side, no matter how you decide to set it up, they, they just need to be able to plan and to know that on the front side that it, what it's going to cost. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Alderman Beatty. Good to have you with us this morning. Um, I got a bunch. Of, I'm, I'm all over the place. I just, but, um, how many cities had combined on the coast? Let's just say our side. I say the Gulf Force, Biloxi's, mm -hmm. Ocean Springs, Moss, not Moss Point, Pascoe's, those kinds of places had combined public works departments where the engineering and it was all, and you know, the uh, utilities and all that was under one. The, so they were all over the board. 
So Gulf Ford, how they had it originally set up was the engineering department was separate from public works. Um, so Chris Raymond retired a few years ago and they actually combined the departments. And so the city engineer and public works directors one position right now um, on that side. And Biloxi, how they actually had it set up was public works. Um, the city engineer actually worked for the public works director until a few years ago. And then they pulled the engineering department out and so how they had that set up was the city engineers did any design projects and the public works was straight maintenance. So anything that was maintenance was public works, anything that was new construction. So like they did all of the construction contracts or say the police department, fire department, any, any capital projects, the construction management went through the engineering and then any design projects went through there. Was that even water and sewer went through the engineering? Everything. So, um, so all, so pretty much if it was new construction, if it was new construction, it went through engineering as far as that goes. And then once you got a project completed, then it got moved to public works and public works was straight maintenance. Um, and then they also, like I said, they did all the, the sides for, so say if you did a new fire station, your port of contact would be the, the engineering department um, on that one. And so you would have, they would be over the- But all capital projects in Biloxi. Went through that, and that all capital projects through Gulfport for the most part did that. A lot of the other cities were smaller. Um, so, say Long Beach, they actually had a private um, utility company that did theirs, I believe. Patrick Christian. So, some of these smaller places, what they would do is contract out their city engineers. Um, so, they would have a consulting firm um, kind of handle that portion of it. And so, Ocean Springs, what they do is they have a consulting firm that does all the design side in house, and then they have one that does their review process. So for the city review, it actually goes to a consulting engineer to do a review, and if it was a design, it would go through another one on there. So it, there's a million different ways, and every city kind of does a difference. Like I said, they, and just in the brief time that I've worked, I've seen cities flip-flop to two or three different systems. Um, in this part of the state, unlike South Mississippi, um, the cities in South Mississippi don't buy electricity off the grid and resell. Right. It's all in Pico down there, or, 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 or an REA. If you got, you know, uh, that had Mississippi Power. Um, so Mississippi Power, you know, yeah. has the monopoly for a good bit of right. um, the areas, and then also Coast Electric, as far as I know. So y'all are, in, yeah, y'all are in the electricity business. Where and everybody from, from here, if everybody here that buys from TDA, most of them right. are in the electric so, business. Yeah. Right. Um, how many of the, the cities? Of these same cities you've talked about, had who, which ones had the aldermen who were involved in the in the process versus those where they didn't. I don't know names on that one, but the um, it didn't depend. So I know uh, so the type of city governments, you know, they're supposed to be set up certain ways where it's actually a chain of command on some stuff, and that really didn't depend. You know, like I'm saying, is some with a strong mayor still had councilmen that were involved, and they wanted them to be involved, and they were fine with it. And there was other places like it was it was set up along those lines. Um, I'd probably say half and half. Versus the weak mayor forms down there. That they're more direct involved where you had weak mayor forms. Well that's what I'm saying is a lot of strong mayor forms, but there's a lot of strong mayor forms that didn't act like a strong mayor form. Um, as far as that goes. So what I'm saying is some some councilmen would be really involved in a project and then I had projects that'd be in a war that you never saw the city councilman at all. Like when they were involved. I had one that had a smart level and uh, we're checking ADA slopes on the handicap ramps behind us. So I had um, I had one councilman that was involved that much, um, and that was in the same strong mayor form on that side of it. So it's um, it really depends on how the constituents and how the project's going. If a project goes smooth, you know, pretty much whenever you, they got phone calls, they you know, they would come to me and you know, get those phone calls. So it was all over the board, just like everybody's personalities. Our system works well if we have a, a, a slight weakness to me. I'm new. I'm the newest person on the board. No, no. But I'm, <laughs> Whoa. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the newer persons on the board. Is that, that I perceive after coming in that sometimes, and it wasn't the fault of anyone, it's just kind of the way the system set up, that the engineering department and the public department, were, I mean the, the utilities department, weren't necessarily coordinating or talking to each other mm -hmm. on projects where for instance, if, if we've got a, a street that's got, we, we think, we don't know, but we got, you know, water lines need to be replaced under, something like that. Well, you can't, you know, and, but, but the street on top of it's not in good shape. 
you can't and don't want to spend capital money on a street before you know whether you've got to go in and, and replace it. And, and let me ask you this, why, uh, the coast seemed to have, after Katrina, endless amounts of money. Uh, there's, it would seem like that. Was there, was there wholesale replacement of utility lines and things, or were they just going back in the destroyed areas to do that? The, so it was actually, there was a scientific way of designing where it was, so pretty much the storm surge, what they did was calculate where the storm surge was high enough to bust the pipes and mess up the gaskets along those lines. So pretty much from the railroad tracks, if you're familiar with it, railroad tracks south, um, for the most part, everything got replaced there. And then also some of the back bay areas, um, Biloxi, because the point's so low, everything, Everything south of the railroad tracks and then east of Keesler, every bit of that was replaced, or actually still going on being replaced. Um, so the majority of it, it was it was wholesale replacement because you can't, you couldn't go in and, and repair 10 foot of pipe and then move over and tie back in type thing. It'd be more money. Um, and then also some cities, so there's two different ways to do with FEMA money. One of it is they cut you a check. So you say, this is, is it called an approved project? Um, and so Biloxi did an approved project. So they had dozens and dozens of lift stations because as the city organically grows, you know, you move over, have another lift station, move over. But if you did that whole city at once, you wouldn't design it like that. You would come in in much more efficient design, have one large lift station and everything grab to it. So FEMA did an approved project there, so they did that design and had it there. So some cities, what they did was FEMA, it was unlimited, but it was only to repair what was damaged. So you couldn't gold plate anything, you couldn't do whatever you had standards-wise before the storm is what they replaced it with. And so you would come along and replace exactly what you had. So if you had a 10-inch sewer main or you know, eight-inch water main, you replaced it one for one. But what that did was there was no chance of overrun, there was no chance of that. It was whatever you had there, FEMA paid to replace it. Um, and so you had to watch those type of things. So you'd come along and make more sense to do something to prove that you could because that wasn't the rules and the regs. In the essence of time, I have to, but I'll, I'll defer. I only say that because we're yeah, pushing sure. our, thank, pushing thank our you. hour. Thank but you for your Thank you. I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, Mr. Um, William, good morning. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. William, for coming. And But really, I don't have nothing to say because y'all asked a lot, of, a lot of things. I'm just taking it in. Okay, I'm sorry, but Vice Mayor, I skipped you. I apologize. I was working my way down the table. Vice Mayor. I clearly understood the process, Mayor. Y'all have done a great job at the yield. Okay, all right. And Alderman Vaughn? All right. Uh, Alderman Beatty, anything pertinent you wanted to come back to real quick? No, okay, all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams. We appreciate it, and um, we appreciate your time and your thoroughness, and um, we'll look forward to talking to you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Nice all right. You. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Hey, Cody. Good morning. Good morning. We don't have to introduce anybody to you, so you're. <laughs> you need a resume? We all have one. We all have one. Thank you. Morning. Well, what we'll start is let let you give us kind of your uh, approach to this and your sense of why you want to be here and why you want to want sure. the position, etc. So. Sure. Well, uh, you all know me, so I've been here for quite some time, for about eight years, and I've been the assistant city engineer for all of that time. And um, I think that to answer the question why I want to be here is that I, I love the city assistant city engineer position. I've done this for eight years. It's been an opportunity for me to really get in the weeds and really kind of learn some things that I wanted to learn and spend some time kind of getting down to the details. But I think that in the past few years, I've realized that I don't want to be the assistant city engineer forever. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's a great position. But I think that I knew that I wanted to do something that was, um, you know, had a responsibility and was a bigger role. So Mr. Kemp has done a wonderful job, and I said he would be here until he retired. That was my assumption because this is a great job. Um, so I thought that if I wanted to move around, that I would do somewhere outside of City Hall. And so whenever Mr. Kemp announced that he was moving, um, certainly I was sad to lose his leadership, but I knew the moment that, that I was going to apply. Um, I knew this is where I wanted to be. And 
Um, of course, I've had time to talk with my family, and this has not been fun on me. We've had months to think about this and consider, but to me, this is the best paced off opportunity for me because I can keep all the benefits of the job that I have now that I enjoy so much while advancing my career and making the most of myself and being able to use my expertise for the city in a way that provides more responsibility and uh, more oversight, more leadership. So that's why I applaud, and uh, this is exactly what I want to do. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to share with the board before we do a roundtable question session? Well, I, I, most of you know me pretty well, so I'll spare you all the background. I've been here eight years, product of the university, civil engineering degree, licensed PE. So all of the requirements I feel like I need, but I want to give you guys my questions. Okay. And so you, I'm correct, you've never worked in the private sector, right? You've always been in the public sector. That's, that's correct. Okay. Um, now, a huge portion of my job is reviewing plans for the private sector and you know, I have relationships with most of the private engineer firms. Uh, I've seen a lot of their process, but my bread and butter has been really review of their plans and, and working with them as consultants. Okay, it's but good. like intern time, you didn't spend any time in the private sector when you were I interning? Did. For did a couple you? of summers, yeah. uh, it's been so long, it's really falls away from memory, but I spent some time with the firm at Tupelo doing some design work and a lot of testing and uh, some more of the nitty gritty side of the private sector. So okay. I did that for about two years during college uh, before coming to this position. Okay. And while, you were, while you've been doing work here, you have been focused on exactly what? So give us kind of, because a lot of us, you know, we know that you've been doing stuff that sure. Edward would do this, but what exactly was it you've been doing for us? Yes, ma'am. So, well, the, the title says a lot about it is, it is the assistant city engineer. So our, our tasks on up very similarly, but um, I'm really the best support role for Edward. Um, one of the things I mentioned that I was able to use this position to hone some skills that I wanted to is over the past few years, I've really been able to dive into the stormwater portion. That's a huge topic for the city. You know, we have a lot of complaints about flooding. I can look around the table and I think every single person here has called me about some kind of flooding issue. And so, you know, really going through learning just the calculations and the numbers and then really using the software. You know, the city has come a long way in the past two or three years on the software that we have, the ability that we have to recreate these designs that we're approving. And so I've had the chance, in fact, of working on a master's degree, which is, which is imminent, and that class is almost solely been focused toward uh, understanding this, this water issue that we have. So that's one of the biggest things that I've done. Um, another portion of what I'll do is we have what's called DRC, that's Development Review Committee. It's when the city reviews any development that wants to come to you know, they have to be in our unified development code, and so it's this really long process from, you know, the preliminary plan all the way through construction to the end until we accept infrastructure. And so over the years, Edward has slowly kind of been portioning that out to me, and then, you know, past, you know, year, past few months, I've completely taken over that portion of review, and that goes all the way from seeing the plans and approving the inspecting infrastructure. That's a big portion. Um, you know, I do a lot, a lot with the public. You know, Edward, obviously, that we get, he would ask me to go check in, be the first line of defense for those, and for uh, the first point of contact. And, you know, and there's a lot of things we do, but that's kind of a note. You know, okay. So, um, so fr from a you didn't you didn't ever en engage in the street process, did you? In, in the street department. Uh, yeah. No. No. Well, that yes, but I was saying like the construction projects, the street. That wasn't something you. you oh yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. This is the first year I haven't done it since being here. My first year in fourteen, Edward kind of taught me, but since fifteen until. This year, when he ever de delegated this task, Mary received a street department project this year. But I've done that, have a wonderful relationship with those contractors. And as far as you know, anything from selecting the street to the quantities to the cost estimate, um, all the way from bidding, the bidding process to the public procurement and then overseeing construction the final, final day, the cradle to grave on that budget. And, and really, a lot of capital improvements drainage, sidewalk streets, um, anywhere from design to inspection has been kind of my job. Okay. Yes, all right. Um, Alderman Carver. Uh, yeah. First of all, I appreciate you applying. Anytime a city employee applies, uh, I like you just kind of pick your brain and pick someone's brain and see what efficiencies or inefficiencies. Sure. Um, so both of these would be kind of kind of geared toward that. Um, so in the perfect world with unlimited money, or if you you know if you could have uh, anything you want to do within the department, what have you learned? Like what type of design standards uh, would you write? Um, was there anything that you want to say? Like, what do you, if you, get, you know, you've been in the department for eight years. What are the top two or three things that you say? Hey, I, I wish I, if I had more control, this is what I would change. Um, That's a great question. Um, 
the first bench, I'll say, is some of the design standards. We, we had really come a long way since 2019. And I did have a large portion of help in that. One, from the fact that one man couldn't do it, Edward couldn't do it alone. And second, he relied on my expertise, especially with storm water and erosion control. So um, I had a chance to really author or write a lot of those documents, which I'm proud of. And you know, the unfortunate thing about the city is nobody wants to submit to a more difficult ordinance for free. You know, so we write these things as good as we can. We use different types of resources to make sure we're on par, but we don't really get a chance to see these in action until they're all until you guys approve them. Because nobody wants to submit to a higher standard if they don't have to. And so we're learning a lot of things um, since the code update in 2019. And I really have a list of things I'm keeping up like, and this isn't working. We're, we're missing this every time. Or, this is too difficult. We should pull back the standard on this. And so I have a lot of things that I'm looking at and doing some research on that I would like to update. Um, so that's one way I'll answer the question. Um, you know, and another thing about, I guess, changes to the department or whatever, Mr. Kemp has done a really good job. I, mean, I think you guys would agree because he was hired for the general manager position. So I don't recommend anyone want to change it for me. I think that's the tendency sometimes. I think the department has good synergy and uh, we mesh well and that we're really on a good trajectory. And so I do want to, at least for the first year, just to keep us on that trajectory and, and keep moving in the direction we're moving because I think it's a good one. Um, but if there was something I would change, I think that, um, and, and this is no fault to any specific person, it's just in general. I think that we have somehow gotten a reputation in the past that the engineering department can be difficult or tough on development. And uh, you know, I hear the complaints and calls. And so my goal is always to provide the best level of quality of structures in the city. You know, my job is to follow the code, follow the plans to a T. You know, we that's our that's our contract. And I want to do the best job I can to make sure the city is the best product. But I also would love to remove the stigma that you can't work with those guys. And they're tough on everybody because they can't be. I think that really there's some opportunities for us to build relationships with people, um, set expectations early on, provide communication early on. And I think it's a room, probably the biggest room for growth in our department is just to, be, um, to have a reputation that we really work with. And that's something I really desire to see happen for us. Second question was exactly about that. But, um, it was, there has been a reputation in the department of the city that's hard to, uh, to work with, or maybe the benchmark has been moved at times, or you um, may ask the question. Do you think that's true? There's always going to be complaints from the public, we know that, but do you think there's some truth to that, the benchmark to move halfway through projects, or is that just something that comes with the territory? And, yeah, that's a good um, question. I think that um, it's really multifaceted, but I, anytime I have a conversation like this, I try to either go back to this unified development code requirement, or is it in the approved plans? And those are kind of my first starting points. And if the answer is no, um, you know, there's things that occur sometimes in development that's unforeseen, it's unpredictable, you have no idea. And you have to balance the idea between um, being fair and equitable to the developer while also protecting the public. And like, it's not always a clear answer, it's not always black and white. And I think you have to use your best judgment to know what protects my citizens and if what is fair. And even go so far as to say what is the right thing to do, which is always murky. But I try to rely on. Um, my job is to protect the citizens as much as I can while doing so with a uh, you know, fair, equitable way for the developer. And so those are my comments. Do you think that the, part, the department is adequately staffed with a number, or do you think it needs to be an addition of employees long term? Well, in a perfect world. That's, no, that's a good question. I feel very understaffed at the moment <laughs> with Edward being gone. But um, I think that there are probably some chances to maybe we lay all the duties on the table, so this duty could go here, and there's probably some restructuring that could be done, to be honest with you. Not that it's bad, but I think there's ways that more responsibilities could be given to more positions. I think that we probably have this staff, and to be honest with you, a lot of times during these heavy summer months when we're so busy, we could really make a long way with, with, with an intern or something like that. I think five years from now, it's very potential. We might do another staff member, but I think if you have three really high quality engineers, which we, we do, you know, you have to Inspector. That's a pretty good team, especially from the fact that Edward and I were the only two people here eight years ago when I came. So um, I think we're in a good place. We just really need key people in the roles. Thank you. Hold on, Sister. We do know you, and that, right. that makes this go a little faster sure. here. Um, you're, you're very familiar with everything that, that goes on, and we are very busy right now with just the normal things that we do and then we have three 
major projects overlaid on top of all of that with the Bill Grant, the, the uh, downtown redo, and the parks project. What's the role of the consulting engineer in, in that? Uh, does that help her bring anything to the table? Um, I know that Mary Williams came to us as a temp project okay. manager type. Um, your thoughts about that? Sure. Yeah, those are massive projects. They are. Multi-million dollar projects. And um, something that we have always prided ourselves on as a department is being able to offer a product that is equal to a and a consultant. Okay? And that's true. I remember we have a five-minute team and only recently had three PEs in the past year or so. So we are limited on what we can do. And we do a lot of other things besides design. And we, we constantly are filling requests for constituents. And, calls and we have the DRC process so we do a lot. I think that for projects of that caliber, the consultant is necessary. I don't think that, not that we don't necessarily have the skill or knowledge, but a lot of time it's just the the overload of how much work it takes to get those off the ground, the oversight. I think the consultants are incredibly beneficial. There's a line somewhere in there, you know, where we try to say, we can do this in house, we can get a good product. I think of Colonial Hills is a good example. Um, the drainage project was really a really large project, but it's something we're doing in house. For some of these that are major corridor projects, restructuring a lot of times we really need the help. And I think it's a good, personally, a good call to have those consultants jump on and provide their expertise. I've worked in the consultant world for internally, as an internal consultant and an external consultant, and there there is a role for them, and it's being able to pick and choose when when they bring something to the table that you can't manage here with them. Um, I'm gonna jump to the big question which we kind of danced around here, which is what what would you need um, from us and from your staff to be successful as, as city engineer and to accomplish the things you've talked about um, to, to make us one of those premier engineering departments in the state? It's a great question. Um, I, I think obviously anybody that comes into this is going to have a bit of a learning curve. And, and one of the things I hope I bring to the table is that I can the learning curve substantially because of my knowledge with the department. But really, I think that one of the things I've noticed over these past few months is I have um, not transitioned from this role, but taken duties from that work, is that I do have a lot of questions. I know a lot about this department, but you don't know everything. And it's different than watching somebody build a fence than building a fence. So there's some things I'm catching up on. But I think responsiveness I've had from the when I have a question or, hey, you think this is a good idea to do this project or should we not? Really just the communication for me from you guys is probably the best thing that you're doing and the best you can continue to do. Um, and then for my staff, I'm really proud of the staff we have. So honestly, what I would like to do is just continue to support them because they support me. You know, they, they are helping me out. So um, I feel like we're in a really good position for, for me to be successful. Um, I would ask for patience as I learn because I don't think anybody's going to come in from Calvary and Mr. King was because he's been here so long. Um, but, you know, I, I believe that I can get there and get there quickly. So your patience and your help because I have questions and I'm, I'm finding my way. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Alvin Brooks. Uh, you mentioned consulting engineers. But, but, you know, we get, if we get bogged down, what's your thoughts on maybe using some contract engineer like Neil Shaper or, or some of those guys, you know, if, if you've got a bunch of plats or something that need to be reviewed or, or that sort of stuff, is that, is that something you'd consider or is that something that you'd um, rather keep inside? Sure, that's a good question. I think specifically for what I would consider the review portion of the job, I think that um, being the fact that we have written the UDC, or we have familiarity with the UDC and what it requires, and, really the way we do business, uh, that's something that I'm proud to be able to do. I'm proud to review development and um, try to move people down the road as quickly as possible. I think that we would probably benefit more personally from consulting on projects, on design, um, would be my opinion. I think it's a great idea. And you know, if we wind up Starbucks developing so much, it's literally not possible to get along with it. I think it's a great idea. But I feel now that we are able to maintain that development review and that we, I feel like we do an excellent job at it. So that would be something I would hope to continue doing as much as possible. If we get over there, they can offload some of the projects we have to consultants. That seems to be throughout that I would favor. Well, it's just that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we have we, that reputation we have, and, and one of them has been timeliness, you know, mm -hmm. that we've, we've it's taken an inordinate amount of time to get some of these things reviewed, and then, yes, and, and then we 
we come back with some things that, that we expect them to change, and then we, you know, the second review we we've added some to it. So, you know, I think that communication you mentioned that earlier. I think we need to stick to the code. But I mean, your your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I'll say that the departments do this. That there's a lot of departments to review. Departments essentially every about every department that has a thing at the time. It's not the clerk, but. Um, we try to balance being quick and moving these things through and also being very thorough and diligent. And it, it is a balance to, 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 to toggle. But um, I hope that if you were to ask some of the different developers and the engineers we've worked with, I can think of many, that they would have a, a, a favorable thing to say about us. And I would encourage you guys to ask. But um, a lot of times it's just, it, it does take time. You know, it does. And I, I don't want it to take too long and, um, you know, waste people's time. And, I would say that I try to have a window in my mind of this has got to be done by hand. You, usually for me, the first review might be two weeks. I think that's a, a I think that's very fair, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it depends on how many you have the plate at once, but um, I, I try to be as equitable as I can be and, and ask for people to be patient because these do take a lot of time. We too often have 30, 40 pages of plans. Right. And so I, I don't think we hold up people for months. That would not be, maybe at one point we did, but I think our reputation has certainly gotten better. Well, you know, a lot of what I hear is, you know, when you really get out and dig into it, it's sure. uh, maybe it's stretched a little bit, but, but still, sure. you know, that when there's that much smoke out there, there's got to be a little bit of power somewhere. So. Well, I try to, the guiding principle for me is I want to be able to defend, if I had to do anything that I require, and have a clear reason for it, not just because it's my opinion or I think this would look better, but I want to have a clear reason. This is why we're doing this and be able to stand behind it. Well, I know we we you know we got some tough issues now, and we were on one the other day, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, so I mean, we've, we've kind of been thrown in the fire with some of that stuff. But, yes, sir. Uh, I think you've done a good job with that. But, Thank uh, you. Uh, that's it, Mayor. Okay, Alderman Beatty. Mr. Burnett. Yes, sir. I see. You. I, I work, Mr. Burnett. I know that he, he's uh, a very, very thorough person. Also, uh, works well with people. Because I know when you deal with public, that's 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 important dealing with people on the issues like stormwater things like that. But, but that's not it's my time to ask you questions. What, what I wanted to ask was, I still say and I kind of kind of hit home. It sounds like a broken record on this, but I have sent, sent since I've been on the board a it, it somewhat in some areas at sometimes a lack of coordination between the engineering department and the utility department on a comprehensive plan going forward with how the city is stalled you know, spends, it's, it's the big money that we'll spend on infrastructure, streets, the water, sewer lines, and stuff under it. And sometimes those, those, are, those in and of itself, street projects, we're about to do a bond issue for $10 million for streets. On the water side, we're about to do 10 or $12 million, 12, 13 million, 20 something million dollars worth of water and sewer. And trying to get the two departments together to work together coordinate and determine where the the money would be best spent, how to coordinate the, the, the replacement of infrastructure before you do streets and, and where and that kind the kind of a, a comprehensive coordinate. Tell me something about what you think about that because I think that for us to to go forward to be efficient and and, and act with, with people's money and, and stuff that, that that needs to be um, it's important and something we might need to improve on but I'll get your thoughts on that. Yes, sir. Joking answer, yeah, I know we got, but I know Mr. Kemp has said the same thing. You know, Mr. Kemp is in that role, which has helped. It doesn't say a lot about, um, you know, me, but he is there. We have a good working relationship. I think maybe I'll go back to it, but the problem always comes down to communication. And fortunately, this is something that has been a hot topic over the past year, it's really a couple of years. We overlay a street water line breaks or water line needs repairs. That's where I'm going. What are we doing here? Yeah. And so I think the first step is aware. And I can assure you that that, that has been something the box has been checked. Um, so really, what it takes is us to get in the same room and just talk about the street listing, talk about what their goals are, what our goals are. And they don't always match, you know. But there's always a place you can find the overlap of two circles. Um, there's some really good staff that's being hired in the utilities department that is really doing a good job. And I think that honestly, just communication and planning is the answer. It's not a magic answer. There's no magic potion. It's just getting ahead of it. And that's something we just continually to work on to get better at is how can we be as communicative as possible and foresee these problems. And that applies to everything. It applies to development. It applies to constituent complaints.
things. Anything that comes up that's having a vision that's looking forward and seeing what problems can occur before they do. So we're very sensitive to it and we're very much have that um, on the list. So I would just say that it's something we're aware of and something we're, we're going to do better at. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Vice Mayor Perkins. Oh, no comments, Mayor. Mayor, um, I, let me say something come on way back to this session. I, I listened to um, uh, both of the candidates, but I'm not going to get to the first one. This is present, but I'm going to be uh, very um, attentive to your recommendation on this matter because you have some very close work relationship with the internal uh, applicant, and you spend a lot of time. Uh, reviewing the applications even though I would listen to